Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a special meeting of the City of Palm Spring, California Historic Site Preservation Board. Today is Thursday, August 26, 2021, and the time is 2.01 p.m. Uh, may I have a roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, Member Hansen? Present. Uh, Member Rosenau? Here. Member Kaiser? Here. Vice Chair Nelson? Present. You have a quorum. Members Miller, Member Rose, and Chair Huff are absent today. Thank you, Ken. Uh, I'd like to ask for a report of the posting of the agenda, please. Yes, the agenda for this meeting was posted for public review at the City Hall Bulletin Board and at the Planning Department counter in accordance with policies and procedures. Thank you. Um, may I have uh, any changes to the agenda by any of the board members present, if any? None. Okay, seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move. I'll second. Okay, we have a first by Member Rose now and a second by Member Kaiser. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any further discussion? Okay. Um, then um, we have uh, public comment. Um, this time has been set aside for members of the public to address the Historic Site Preservation Board on agenda items and those items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of our board. Although we value your comment pursuant to the Brown Act, we generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted agenda. There will be three minutes assigned for each speaker. Testimony for public hearing will be taken at the time of the hearing. Thank you. May we have a staff report, please? Uh, there's no one that we have uh, right now that's been requested to speak during public comment. So there is an individual here uh, besides the owner who will be speaking on behalf of item 2A, but that will happen at the time of the public hearing. Great, thank you. Um, okay, and uh, at this time, I believe it's appropriate to see if uh, any of our board members present have any questions of staff. Uh, regarding uh, item 2A. No, no, you first are gonna wanna do the um, approval of the minutes, Jade. Oh, great, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> does uh, anyone have any changes to the minutes that were included in our packet? Okay, uh, being done by board members, I actually do have uh, a couple uh, that are fairly minor. So um, let's see, um, on uh, page five of seven, the bottom paragraph, the first line says, Member Nelson asked for clarification of the Illuminar houses relative to the museum classroom status. That should be Illuminar house singular and not plural. And then on the last page, seven of seven, uh, the third paragraph, the last line is uh, perimeter landscape had been removed from the classroom site in Bernada site. Uh, so one of those words site should be, be removed, probably the one after in Bernada. And those are the only uh, changes I have at this time. Okay, and I'd like to welcome member Miller to the meeting. Thank you. Are you, able, are you able to hear? I I am. I'm on my iPhone. I'm still trying to log on through my computer, but I've had a little difficulty with Zoom. So um, if I leave for a second, it's because I'm going to my computer. Okay, great. No problem, Scott. And uh, just so you know, we're currently on the uh, approval of the minutes, and none of our fellow board members had any changes. Did you have any changes? I did not have any changes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, 
seeing as that there are no further changes to the min minute, uh, may we have a motion to approve? I move to approve. Second. Great. Uh, I believe that was a motion by Member Hanson and a second by Member Kaiser. Uh, all in favor of the minutes, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you so much. And now I believe at this time we can move on to the uh, public hearing 2A, an application by the city of Palm Spring for historic designation of the Robert Alexander Revenant, AKA the House of Tomorrow, located at 1350 Ladera Circle, Palm Spring, California, HSPB number 136. Uh, so um, I believe at this time it's appropriate to ask the board if they have any questions of staff before we allow uh, public testimony. No, Jade, you first wanna um, have me do a summary of the staff report. Okay, great, please do that, thank you. <laughs> thank you. As noted on the front of your staff report, at the May 4th, 2021 HSPB meeting, the board considered case 3.0917 proposing alterations to the uh, property at 1350 Ladera Circle, a class three site. At that meeting, the, voted, the board voted to deny the application, impose a 120-day stay of demolition, and directed staff to initiate an application for possible historic designation of the site. That's what the board is considering at its meeting today. So beginning on page uh, two or three of your staff report is the analysis in which the uh, property is evaluated against the criteria in the city's historic preservation ordinance. The... Um, Material provided in this particular application and in the analysis is based on a uh, historic resources report that was prepared for the city by Robert Chattel and Associates dated July 12th, 2021. Um, as noted in the staff report, the building does have uh, potential historic significance. Uh, in terms of its uh, significance with a person, uh, that being Robert and Helene Alexander. Uh, Robert, along with his father, George, were uh, the developers uh, with the Alexander Construction Company, which is credited for really transforming Palm Springs from an enclave of wealthy business people and uh, movie industry moguls to a vacation and retirement destination accessible to the middle class. So it is recognized that their significance locally is important, and so the house qualifies under criteria two. Criteria three is also one in which the building qualifies as a... Um, particularly unique uh, example of a building from the mid-century modern period. Uh, and it noted on page four that this building possesses elements of organic architecture, uh, mid-century architecture, and even Googie style architecture. Uh, and so for this reason, the building qualifies under Criterion 3. Uh, the uh, report also analyzed the property under Criteria 4, uh, distinctive characteristics or method of construction and noted that the building in its particular stylistic form was, was achievable because of the use of steel. So when this building was built, the very large expansive overhangs that you see could not have been possible if it was simply built out of a wood frame construction. And so therefore the uh, criteria number four in terms of a distinctive method of construction does qualify this for uh, consideration as well. <clears throat> And then lastly, criterion five, association with an architect of significance, that being the firm Palmer and Kreisel and specifically uh, William Kreisel. William Kreisel, although the firm involved both parties at the time or both partners at the time that this um, uh, home was uh, designed, Kreisel is credited with the one with the primary design um, of the home. And so recognizing uh, Kreisel as a architect and a, as a building in which there is a high artistic value Criterion five is established. Uh, the further analysis beginning on page six of your staff report analyzes the integrity of the home as listed in the city's ordinance. The four settings, location, design, uh, setting materials, workmanship, feeling, and association all have significance in this case. I've noted on page, um, uh, um, excuse me, six, and then onto page seven, uh, some uh, material impairments or uh, things that have happened to the building which do impair its uh, historic integrity in terms of a design perspective. 
And those are noted on page six and seven of your report. Despite these, uh, the report asserts and staff concurs that the House does, does still possess significant integrity. The defining characteristics uh, as proposed in the Historic Resources Report are outlined on page nine of your staff report and continue on to page 10. At the bottom of page 10 is the listing of non-contributing items. Um, and uh, uh, those are uh, available to con conclude on page 11. So in conclusion, the staff report and the historic resources report uh, agrees that the property is uh, eligible as a historic resource under criteria two, three, four, and five, and possesses significant historic integrity to qualify as a class one historic site. Um, Mr. Vice Chair, this is a public hearing. I'm available for any questions that the board members may have. Uh, and the um, property owner is also with us who would like to speak during public testimony. Thank you. Great, so at this time, I believe it's appropriate uh, for any members who may have questions of staff to direct those to Mr. Lyon at this time, and then we will allow the owner to speak. Any questions, Mr. Member Hanson? Um, yes, I just have a question regarding the character defining features. It references, I believe that the landscaping is non-contributing. And I was just wondering if that's a result of any recent work on the property or if the landscaping had been altered previously um, so that in either event, it may have been non-contributing. I don't know when the uh, removal of most of the original landscaping occurred. Um, the owners, when they uh, provided the site inspections for the um, members of the board, identified that there had been a lot of very, very overgrown plant material, uh, particularly along the north side of the house, uh, and that they had removed that. Um, much of it was actually hanging over and in impacting the structure itself. Uh, we don't know, though, when all of the landscaping was removed. We do know that the landscaping in most of the backyard appeared to have been removed by the current um, property owner. Thank you. Uh, on that note, if I may make an observation, uh, the original landscape uh, in the packet in the plan uh, was designed by uh, the architect, William Kreifel, and that rendering is included in our packet. And uh, to my knowledge, the best of my knowledge, the hardscape has not changed in the front of the house. So what you see from the street uh, still remains very much as it did during the period of significance, uh, 1960 to 1965. Uh, so the softscape, such as the shape of the lawn and the amount of plantings and where those plantings were uh, may have fluctuated and changed over time, but the general appearance, uh, to the best of my knowledge, has remained largely the same up until the current owner took possession. So it, it's still in that condition today, you're saying, Member Nelson? Um, maybe not today, but up until oh. the moment they bought the property, I believe. Okay. Any other comments for Jeff? Okay. Uh, being none, I would like to open this up to the public, but allow the owner to speak first, please. And um, Mr. Vice Chair, I believe um, Dan Bridge, uh, representing the owner, is here. And I believe um, Rob uh, Bernheimer is also here, uh, representing the owner. And it looks like Mr. Bernheimer has turned his um, microphone on. So I believe he could be the first speaker. Do you want me to turn my video on? Here we go. If you'd like. Here we go. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rob Bernheimer, and I represent the, uh, the property owners. Uh, uh, and, and we'll represent them going through this process. I first want to say that they are extremely excited to um, be able to restore this house. Uh, it is obviously a, 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 an amazing ex example of mid-century architecture. Um, I was you know, blown away by the house when I, when I toured it personally. Um, but there are challenges with this house. It was neglected for many, 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 many years. And so... Uh, they have a big project ahead of them to, you know, restore it so that somebody can live in it and then take care of it going forward. Um, but uh, we're going to review those plans, I think, down the road. Uh, we not only is this application being 
uh, presented by the city. Uh, just to remind you, we paid for the report to analyze the historical significance of this. So this has been done, you know, hand in hand. And I understand that, you know, originally when they purchased the house, um, they didn't understand some things about how the process worked. And I'm, I'm helping them try to understand that process. Uh, also, with regards to your questions about landscaping, a lot of the landscaping was disrupted in the rear of the house before my clients purchased it because the, pro the city allowed the property to be subdivided and then a new house be constructed on part of it. So that disrupted the entire rear landscaping of the house on the um, west side, I believe. Uh, so that, that was sort of pre to my clients purchasing the house. Uh, they certainly want to um, maintain the character of what the original landscaping was to the extent that you can now that the lot is smaller. Um, but that's not something that they had they had control over. So we're looking forward to bringing our plans to you at a future meeting. Hopefully this uh, class one designation can get approved today and then move to the city council. And we'll come back before you with our plans on the renovation. Uh, and again, they're dedicated to really preserving the historical character of the house. We also have to modernize it so that people who live in it can uh, enjoy the house and therefore it'll be preserved going forward. If the house isn't modernized, I think we're gonna have the same problems that we've had over the last 10 years, which is the house has just deteriorated to a point um, that, you, that you see it uh, at, the, at the point my clients purchased it. So we don't really have anything to add to the, to the staff report. Uh, we just are excited about being able to bring this before you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bernheimer. Uh, does anyone have any questions, uh, Mr. Bernheimer, at this time? Okay, then I believe we have another uh, owner's representative and or owner who wishes to speak. Is that the case? Yes, this, this is Paul Armitstead. Um, I'm one of the owners. It lights up as uh, Dan Bridge, but Dan's unavailable today. Um, he's had a recent, uh, well, he's, he has a recent stay in the hospital and is taking care of some health issues. Um, so Rob and I have stepped up to the plate uh, and I thank Rob for helping to coach us through this process. In addition, I wanna thank all of you, the board and, uh, and the city for carrying this, uh, this application forward because it's always been our intent to uh, make this house the best it can be um, for the, the people who will be living in it in the future and for the city to enjoy. So um, I, I wanna make it clear that we support this application. And again, I thank you guys um, for your time and I look forward to working with you in the next steps uh, moving forward to um, bring this all back to life. Great, thank you, Mr. Birch. Uh, do uh, any of our members have any questions for Mr. Birch at this time? Just a clarification again, it's uh, Paul Armitstead. Um, I'm Dan Bridges' partners. We're partners in the, uh, oh, in the my project. Apologies. Dan's yeah. my brother-in-law, so. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> sure. I'm just reading off the screen here. Um, do I see any, any questions from any of our members? Um, Mr. Vice Chair, the questions of the applicant should be taken after the public hearing has been closed. Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you for the clarification. This was my first time sharing. So um, now I would like to open it up to any members uh, of the public who may be present who wish to speak. Mr. Vice Chair, I'm not aware of any other members who are here in the uh, meeting with us who were looking to speak. Uh, if either of the people who are still here as visitors wish to speak, please unmute your microphone and uh, introduce yourself. It does not look like we have any further speakers for public testimony. Okay, great. So uh, in that event, I will be uh, closing the public hearing and opening it up to the board members for their comments and questions of the applicant. Do we have any, Ms. Hanson? I have a just a comment overall. It's not for the applicant. Is this the right time for that? Sure. Okay. I just wanted to um, 
you know, acknowledge the consultant. I think they did a, a really good job on this nomination, um, especially given the situation where, you know, you can't do necessarily in-person research. And I also was very happy to see that Helen Alexander was recognized as well as her husband, Robert. Um, as we know, that's not always the case that, that um, you know, wives are given equal credit for their contribution uh, to the community. I wouldn't mind, however, if the description of her in the report said she was a homemaker. And I sense that that was probably something out of maybe a, a dated uh, source of information, but followed by a philanthropist, I think we could just agree that, you know, her, phil her philanthropic um, contributions to Palm Springs were, you know, why she's being recognized. So I was very happy to see that. Great, thank you, uh, Member Hanson for that. And in fact, we appreciate that. Uh, anyone else? Um, Mr. Wozna, Mr. Kaiser, Mr. Mr. Wozna. I just uh, want to echo the uh, the thoughts about the, the reports. They're both very thorough, the staff report as well as the consulting report. Um, I really appreciated the tour that we were given, a very detailed tour of both the interior and exterior of the, uh, of the house. Um, and we got kind of the plans of what is going to be done. So um, I really appreciate that. So I, I'm a proponent of this uh, as a class one. Great, thank you, Mr. Rosenau. Anyone else? I guess I, I do have a question for staff. Um, is there another opportunity to tour the property again before the next meeting where the alterations and the proposed project would be discussed? Um, yes, typically when we have an application for a certificate of appropriateness, we do try to uh, arrange for site visits so that the board members can understand the specific requests that are coming in for the certificate. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Kaiser. Uh, I as well support this as a class one nomination. I think this is one of the most famous houses in Palm Springs. And again, the tour was fantastic and listening to what the current owners have said and observed, even though some of the things are gone from what the original plans were, it really showed to me an understanding of this property and the intent to bring it as close to that as possible and to make it work for today's living. So I support this. Great, thank you. And uh, Mr. Miller, do you have any comments at this time? I I would just say I echo what the other board members have said regarding the appropriateness of this as a class one resource. I definitely agree with that. Um, I have a question perhaps to Ken. Um, we did receive the public comment letter from previous owners. Um, and as far as I can tell that, that letter um, did contain some mischaracterizations of what has happened. I don't know if it's appropriate to address those or just let that be part of the public record, whether it's accurate or not. I don't know what your um, feeling is regarding that, but I, I would definitely remind everyone that the city exercised their zoning regulations um, for some past uh, activities that apparently occurred at the site, uh, at just as they're exercising their um, zoning regulations regarding uh, moving forward when we'll work <laughs> was done on this property <laughs> without right. proper permits. So in that regard, the city has been consistent in addressing um, essentially code violations at the property. And I wanted to put that on the record. Thank you. And typically we don't worry about making public comments on public comments, but thank you for that. Great. And um, since everyone has had a chance to provide some input. I do have a list of about uh, 10 or so questions and I will try to keep it brief if possible. I wanted to address these things at this point rather than wait until we get a certificate of appropriateness just to clear the air and get some answers. So um, seeing that the uh, applicant representatives are still with us, I would like to maybe uh, specify this question for um, Paul. If you're still with us, Paul. I am. Great, great. So um, I'm working off of the uh, May staff report that was given to the board on May 4th. 
uh, pretty comprehensive, and it includes uh, all of the drawings and photographs that were submitted by uh, the applicant. So um, just a series of questions and a few concerns. The first one is that- um, Vice Chair Nelson? Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanna make sure that your questions are relative to the class one application. That is what the public hearing and this particular hearing is about, not about the proposed alterations. Okay, um, so if it affects the exterior front landscape, which is part of the class one designation, would that be an appropriate uh, comment or question? You're analyzing the property in its present state not based on the proposed alterations that the applicant is contemplating. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so some of these questions have to do with some of the character defining features, the appearance of character defining features and during the period of significance. So I will limit it to those if that's okay. Great. Certainly. So, uh, that takes me right back to my first question. Um, in the original plan uh, that Chrysler did, which are provided in uh, the packet on page 18, this shows 15 tags that go up to the front door. Um, 14 of those are round. Uh, and then uh, one is rectangular. Then you have the, uh, the main entry pad no. at the, the curve. Okay. So uh, the new landscape plan shows 18 paths. So I'm just wondering if somewhere along the way, a pad or two got broken. And so they are no longer there. Uh, if the plan was just to keep what is there at the moment, or to add another pad or two like was uh, in the original plan. Do you have an answer for me on that? Are you still there? No. Okay. Your microphone is muted, Paul. Thank you. There we go. I apologize, everyone. Um, so that, that question that you asked me, um, are you, the, the count of the, as to my knowledge, the, the pads that are there, the lily pad effect is exactly as it was uh, when the photographs were taken for Look Magazine. Uh, if any of those pads are missing or gone, um, I cannot see where it was in the sequence of going up. It would strikes me that it would have had to have been maybe the one at the street or something like that, if, you know, talking about the count. But, um, but those lily pads, I to the best of my knowledge and my research are exactly as they were the day, uh, the day uh, uh, that Helena was walking up those, those steps in the Look Magazine. Great, thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. Um, also, uh, as we relate to the landscape, um, the, uh, on the original plan that Chrysler did for the landscape, it appeared that the back line of the lawn was parallel to the street line and at the same curve. Are you planning to restore the lawn to that Chrysler landscape plan or are you planning to take it all the way up to the wall of the house? Member Nelson, I'm going to again interrupt and say that's not a factor in the current consideration. That's a consideration okay. of a future improvement. Okay, great. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, let's see if there's anything else here relating to the original integrity. Um, I guess the backyard wouldn't, wouldn't apply at this time, Ken, even though we had some original character defining terraza, which was removed. You can certainly address a question in terms of design integrity, uh, in terms of the home's integrity based on the material that is gone that was, um, that we understand is part of the original design. Okay. Um, in that case, I would just state for the record that I, I do have an issue with the fact that the rear terrazzo was removed uh, outside the pool deck without a permit. 
and um, being that was part of the period of significance and that it did relate to the indoor outdoor flow and the design of the house. Uh, it feels that um, some restoration of Toronto outdoor would be appropriate. Uh, perhaps not all of it, but it goes back to the historic significance, the period of significance and the architect's intent to have that continuation of the indoor material going outdoors, um, maybe perhaps just to the roof line of time or whatever. But I just wanted to state that for the record. I thought that that was uh, an unfortunate loss of historic material and it would be nice to see that restored. So that would probably conclude all my questions except for one. And um, that would be regarding Mr. the- Mr. Color. Chair, th this is Rob Bernheimer on the app. Can, can I just um, make a comment on, on what you just said? So- Sure, please do. Great. So I just want you to know that the, uh, the, the, the exterior terrazzo was in extraordinarily poor condition. So although it was removed, it really wasn't salvageable. And so something, something had to be done. Um, but I can tell you that in my conversations with the property owner, they certainly understand the importance of carrying the indoor to the outdoor in the original design of the house and doing so in a way that, that captures that architectural uh, element. And so uh, we will be happy to sit down with you, maybe even at the site before we have our our um, certificate of appropriateness hearing and really go over that in detail with you because um, like you, we think that this is an extraordinarily important part of the property. And so we, we will definitely um, uh, pay attention to that. But I just, I do want you to know that it really wasn't salvageable. And so uh, something, had to, something had to be done. It is unfortunate, and, and this is why I'm involved now, that it, you know, the right steps may have not been taken on the front end, but we're, we're not gonna be making those mistakes going forward. Great, thank you for that clarification, much appreciated. So uh, just going back to the exterior paint color, uh, since it does relate to uh, the historic significance and the original integrity, uh, I'm not an expert on paint or on Chrysler, um, but I just wanted to clarify that at 100% certain that that color that was revealed uh, as alabaster was in fact the original pink color and not a base coat or primer. And if anyone could answer that, I'd be uh, most grateful. Are you talking about the color on the house now? No, I'm talking about the color they want to restore it to which is supposedly the original color. That's not part of today's consideration. Why not? Because you're considering the property in its present state. Okay. If Great. you feel that the color of the home at this time, or you feel that the removal of the exterior terrazzo has caused such a material impairment of the design integrity, such that the home lacks sufficient design integrity in order to qualify as a class one site, then your option would be to categorize it as a recommendation to council for a class two historic site. But our recommendation at the staff report at level and as well in the historic resources report is that there is adequate integrity in the home currently to qualify as a class one site. Thank you, I don't disagree. Okay, so seeing uh, no further comments or questions, um, does anybody else have any other questions of Ms. Jamista or for staff? Uh, any closing comments by Mr. Bernheimer or Fiona? That's not appropriate. Public testimony is finished. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Mr. Kaiser? Do we have somebody making a motion? Yeah, Mr. Kaiser, microphone is muted. Okay, new icons, all right, anyway. I move that we accept this staff report as written. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. 
Uh, the motion is by Member Kaiser, the second is by Member Hanson. Uh, and can I please get an outline of what exactly the motion is, Mr. Kaiser? It's in the staff report to accept this and recommend this as a class one historic site. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that. And we have a motion and a second. May I have uh, a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Seeing as we have completed item 2A, we will now move on to item three, unfinished business. Just recognizing for the record that motion did pass. Thank you, Ken. Uh, and seeing as that the item 3A is not a public hearing, uh, I will just go ahead and read the description, which is an application by Paul Amistad and Daniel Bridge, only for approval of alterations to the House of Tomorrow, uh, a class we have to site at 1350 Ladera Circle. Uh, Recommendation by staff is to extend the day of demolition placed on the property at the May 4th, 2021 HFPB meeting by an additional 60 days from September 1st, 2021 to October 31st, 2021, pursuant to Municipal Code Section 9.05.130. And uh, I'll open it up to uh, DAF report at this time. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, this is a fairly simple action that you're being asked to consider here. Uh, the stay of demolition on which you placed on this property on May 4th does expire. In order to complete the processing of the historic designation application, we do need to request that you extend the stay by another 60 days. Uh, to uh, uh, October 31st to allow us to schedule this at a public hearing of the city council to consider your recommendation. Great, and thank you for that. Uh, any comment by any of the board members at this time? Okay, seeing none. Uh, staff, do we need to ask for comment from anyone else? No. Okay, great. Um, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Mr. Rocha? I move to extend the stay 60 days. A second. Great. We have a motion by Member Rosna to uh, extend the stay by 60 days and a second by Member Miller. Uh, all those in favor, to say aye. 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 Okay, great. Motion passes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, to zero. <laughs> and we have uh, two members uh, currently absent today. So I'll turn it uh, back over to uh, staff for any comments uh, in general, and then we can follow it up with any general board member comments. Uh, you may want to take board member comments first, and then I'll conclude with any board member or any staff comments. Sure, wonderful. Uh, I appreciate that. Can anyone have anything they'd like to add at this meeting? Mr. Kaiser. I just want to think moving forward to the HSPB symposium, the way that things are moving. Um, I think it's important for this board to try to get a vision of what this symposium should look like. They conditions deteriorate or stay the same. We need to get a clear picture of what this is going to look like before we get to the point of doing this big presentation, planning everything, getting all these speakers put together, and then not being able to carry through on all of it, plan A and a plan B. This is not something that we can do today, but this is something that I think is very, very important that we get this on everybody's radar screen, that there's a potential that we will not be able to realize the vision that we currently have in place. Now, I know a lot of you have not been at all of the meetings and everything else, but even approaching all these people for all these tours and everything else, 
I would feel very bad to do it all again, get them all excited, get everybody ready to go, and then have to pull half of them out. So I just want people to think about that and consider that before we have our next meeting, because we are going to have an HSPB meeting. I mean, a, a symposium meeting here on, I believe it's September 16th. So if you have thoughts about it before that time, it would be great for you to go to me or to Catherine or to Ken or whatever. That's what I have to say. Great, thank you, Dan, for that. We appreciate it. Uh, anyone else have any comments? Mm, being none, uh, Mr. Lyon. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, the only uh, comment that I want to offer is, uh, as was discussed at the last meeting, uh, we have received some information from uh, the Bank of America uh, regarding some capital improvements and deferred maintenance uh, work on the City National Bank building uh, at the south end of uh, Palm Canyon. And um, as we know more and as they get ready to prepare their application, uh, I will notify you if it is going to be a matter for the board to consider or whether it's something that will be processed at staff level. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention is I want to put a special thanks out to all of the board members who are here today. Uh, I appreciate your uh, extra efforts to schedule this special meeting, especially during the month of August when so many of you have vacations. And um, Member Hanson, I understand you have a new member of the family who's going to be joining you soon. So good luck oh, with that. Already here. She's already here. here. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, so a special thanks to all of you um, for uh, helping put this meeting together. That's all I have. Great. And I would likewise like to say on behalf of the board, a special thank to uh, Staff Member Lyon for uh, working with all of us and mm -hmm. getting through the schedule of August and vacations and uh, trying to schedule all of those site visits we've been having. So that is much appreciated. Thank you for your flexibility and also to Joanne, uh, your assistant for her help as well. I will pass that along. <laughs> Great. Um, and I think um, seeing no other comments, concerns, or input, uh, we will be adjourning uh, at 2.43 p.m. Uh, to our regularly scheduled meeting on Tuesday, September 14, 2021. Oh, Mr. Lyon? I beg your pardon. We always have to do Alzheimer's round here <laughs> in this planning department. And I did just want to mention to all of you that uh, please remember that I sent you information about the annual work plan uh, so that when we head into the meeting in September, you can have your ideas and suggestions that we can put together uh, so we can begin working on getting that work plan together for the next fiscal year. Thank you. Great, so before I finish that adjournment, uh, I do <laughs> wanna just say uh, thank you to everyone who is watching today and also to Mr. Amistad and Mr. Bonheimer for joining us and for providing that valuable input. Uh, we appreciate your time and patience today. Uh, so with that, we are continuing to adjourn to our regular meeting on Tuesday, September 14th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. in the large conference room at City Hall or via Zoom until further notice. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.